watching just the news from Amitabh Balachandran. There's big news coming in today that COVID booster shots will be available for all people above the age of 18 in private vaccination centers from Sunday, which is the 10th of April. However, uh, these are not free of cost. It will be paid for considering it's private vaccination centers. The center in a statement said, and I quote, all those who are more than 18 years of age and have completed nine months after the administration of second dose would be eligible for precaution dose, end quote. Now, according to NDTV, Serum Institute of India CEO Adar Punawala said that Covishield will cost 600 rupees plus taxes and Covax, once approved as a booster, will be available uh, for 900 rupees plus taxes. Now, unlike the booster shots announced for healthcare workers, Frontline staff and those above uh, 60, the third jab, however, will not be uh, free of cost, like I mentioned earlier. About eight, uh, about 83% of the 15 plus population of India is currently fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, several states are now lifting COVID restrictions. The latest to join that list is Kerala. Uh, wearing masks and maintaining hygiene, however, will continue to be in force. Kerala has reported 291 new COVID cases on Thursday. Now, in the meantime, Maharashtra, Delhi, Telangana, West Bengal, Himachal Pradesh and Nagaland have all lifted uh, COVID restrictions. Telangana and Maharashtra have also list, uh, lifted mask mandates apart from uh, other COVID restrictions as well. An update on the Mulla Perrier Dam issue. Uh, the Supreme Court today uh, ordered the reconstitution and strengthening of the supervisory committee which manages the Mulla Perrier Dam in Kerala. Now, the court ordered that two technical experts who are well versed will be, with the instrumentation and dam safety shall be appointed as part of the committee within the next two weeks. One technical member must be from Tamil Nadu and one technical member, the court said, must be from Kerala. Further, the chief secretaries of Tamil Nadu and Kerala shall be responsible and must make suggestions to the advisory committee for the safety of the dam. Now, the apex court further ordered the supervisory committee to file a compliance report by the 11th of May. Trigger warning for people who are watching right now. The next piece of news is quite disturbing. The National uh, Commission for Women has today sought the arrest of a seer from Uttar Pradesh who allegedly issued rape threats to women of a particular community. Now, NCW has also reprimanded the police saying that it cannot be a mute uh, spectator but take appropriate measures to curb such incidents. Now, a video of a saffron-clad uh, seer, Bajrang Das, uh, allegedly delivering the hate speech and issuing this rape threat went viral on social media. In the video, the uh, Mahant of Maharshi Shri Lakshman Das Udasin Ashram in Khairabad town in Uttar Pradesh can be heard saying in the video that if any Hindu woman is teased by a man belonging to a particular community, the seer would himself rape a woman of that community. Now, the NCW chairperson has written to the Director General of Police Uttar Pradesh to immediately intervene in the matter and register an FIR against him and arrest him. Meanwhile, Yati Narsinghanand is at it again, the main accused in the Haridwar hate speech case, uh, who is now out on bail, has now argue, uh, urged, I beg your pardon, Hindus to produce more children to prevent India from becoming Hindu-less. Now, he said, and I quote, mathematical calculations state that a non-Hindu will become the Prime Minister in 2029. If once a non-Hindu becomes a Prime Minister, then in 20 years, this country will become a Hindu-less nation, end quote. Now, Narsingh Anand was arrested and later released on bail after he allegedly organized a dharam sansad in uh, Haridwar from December 17th to 19th last year, where provocative speeches were made against Muslims. Meanwhile, in Madhya Pradesh, the police yesterday ordered an internal inquiry after a photograph of eight men, including a YouTuber, stripped down to their undergarments, were stripped down to their undergarments and standing in Kotwali police station of Madhya Pradesh. Now, uh, Siddhi SP has told the Indian Express, and I quote, irrespective of the crime committed by the culprits, such action of stripping is not acceptable. Based on prima facie evidence, we have attached town inspector 
and station house officer to police line. Since Singh was present in the police station at the time, he is also being transferred out. End quote. Now, SP Srivastava has said that the Kotwali police had on the 2nd of April arrested Neeraj Kundar, a theatre uh, artist, uh, in a case related to defaming a BJP MLA and his family, post which, to oppose the arrest, a group of around 40 men, Kundar's relatives and friends, which included uh, that YouTuber, they protested at the police station in the evening and started raising slogans. Moving on now, uh, there's a statement that comes uh, that's come in from Home Minister Amit Shah, who was quoted by the Ministry of Home Affairs as having said in the 37th meeting of the Parliamentary Official Language Committee, he said this and I quote, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has decided that the medium running the government is the official language and this will de definitely increase the importance of Hindi. Now the time has come to make the official language an important part of the unity of the country. When citizens of states who speak other languages communicate with each other, it should be in the language of India, end quote. Now, Home Minister Amit Shah clarified that Hindi should be accepted as an alternative to English and not local languages. He also suggested that Hindi should be made more flexible by accepting words from other local languages. Now, he is the chairperson of the official language committee. Meanwhile, in Maharashtra, Several workers of the Maharashtra State Road Transport Corporation uh, protested outside NCP Chief Sharad Pawar's house. Now, the workers accused Sharad Pawar of ignoring the demands of making the MSRTC a full government unit. Now, thousands of these workers have been on strike since November last year, demanding that they be treated on par uh, with the state government employees and that the cash-strapped transport corporation be merged with the government. The protest comes a day after the Bombay High Court asked the striking workers of the Transport Cooperation to resume duty by the 22nd of April. Also in the news, the special CBI court today directed former Amnesty International India Chief Akar Patel not to leave the country without its permission and stayed a magistrate's order that had asked the investigative agency's director to apologize to the writer activist. Now, special judge Santosh... Uh, Saini Man, a uh, state additional chief metropolitan magistrate Pavan Kumar's order on Thursday that asked the CBI to withdraw the lookout circular issued over a 2019 case that was registered against Amnesty International India under the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. Now, Patel headed the human rights organization at the time. Uh, on Thursday night, uh, the US bound uh, Patel was stopped at Bengaluru International Airport. His lawyers have submitted before the magistrate that apart from the previous loss of about 3.8 uh, lakh rupees, Patel has thus suffered another loss of 6 lakh rupees. It was the second time Patel had been stopped from flying abroad. Now, this matter is going to be heard on the 13th of April. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has cleared the amendments made by the Centre in 2020 to the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. 2010 or the FCRA. Now, the bench has said, and I quote, receiving foreign donation cannot be an absolute or even a vested right. Uh, the court also added, uh, we say so because the theory of possibility of national polity being influenced by foreign contribution is globally recognized, end quote. Now, the judgment ca uh, came on a batch of three writ petitions, uh, two of which challenged the 2020 amendments, while the third one prayed for stricter enforcement of the amended and other provisions of the act. Moving on to business news right now, Reserve Bank of India Governor uh, Shakti Kanta Das has kept the repo rate and the reverse repo rate unchanged at 4% and 3.35% respectively in its first monetary policy statement of FY 2023. Now, the Monetary Policy Committee of the RBI revised the FY 23 GDP forecast to 7.2% from earlier guidance of 7.8%. Now, inflation projections have also been raised to 5.7%, higher than the previous expectation of 4.5%. On to environment news, uh, victory for uh, people who have been campaigning for Mole uh, in Goa. The Supreme Court on Thursday has accepted CEC's recommendation against cutting down a forest area 
uh, for the Goa Tamna transmission project. Now, this is one of the three uh, projects that people were protesting against. The CC had earlier recommended that the proposed 400 kV line should be drawn alongside the existing 220 kV corridor line in Goa. Now, the CC had said that the move will help in saving previous forest cover and wildlife in the ecologically fragile and biodiversity rich Western Ghats. Now, environmentalists in Goa have been protesting uh, since 2020 against three projects. This is one of the projects. Apart from this, there are two others the doubling of a railway track and the four laning of NH4A. Now, the objections to the railway track and the highway expansion are before the court and are awaiting a final decision. Meanwhile, in Maharashtra, the Bombay High Court yesterday asked the centre and the state government to amicably resolve the dispute involving the 102-acre plot at Kanjumark, where the state government has proposed to construct a metro car shed and an interchange for various metro corridors. Now, this comes as the delay was es e escalating costs and increasing burden on the state exchequer. In the meantime, the center has said that according to reports prepared by the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, it was technically not feasible to construct that car shed at Kanjurmang. Now, to give you a bit of a context, people in uh, the state of Maharashtra and Mumbai have been protesting uh, against the Metro car shed, which was earlier proposed in RA. It was called the Save RA campaign. It went on for years, since 2017. Uh, but the MVA government announced that it would be shifted to Kanjurmag. But now there's a tug of war between the center and the state where activists say that so far state government's promises have led nowhere. On to international news, uh, starting off with Sri Lanka's economic crisis. A uh, crisis has worsened. The main opposition party in Sri Lanka on Friday has announced that it will move a no-confidence motion against the government of President Gotabaya Rajapaksha uh, if it fails to take steps to address the concerns of the public facing hardships uh, due to the worst ever economic crisis. There's shortage of fuel, there's shortage of essential items, there's shortage of drugs even. Uh, doctors have been protesting as well. Sri Lanka's finance minister on Friday has said that the country had no alternative to but to restructure it de its debt as it faces a crippling economic crisis. Now, Ali Sabri, who took charge of the finance minister again, has said in the parliament, and I quote, We have to decide if we are going to feed our people to pay our debt, but we cannot step away from repaying debt because the consequences are terrifying. There is no alternative. We must restructure our debt. Now, Sri Lanka's central bank has doubled its key interest rates on Friday, raising each by an unprecedented 700 basis points to tame inflation that has soared because of extreme shortage in fuel and essential items. On to Ukraine right now, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it's day 44. At least 50 people, including five children, were killed today in a rocket attack on a train station in the eastern Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk, uh, which was being used for civilian evacuations. Russia, however, has denied that it launched the attack. Ukrainian president described Russia as an evil with no limits after this rocket attack. Meanwhile, the United Nations General Assembly on Thursday suspended Russia from the UN Human Rights Council over reports of gross and systematic violations and abuses of human rights. Now, the US-led uh, push garnered about 93 votes in favor, with 58 countries abstaining and 24 countries voting no. Out of the absten abstentions, India also uh, abstained. EU has adopted fifth round of sanctions against Russia over its military aggression against Ukraine uh, sanctions, in which include Prohibition to purchase, import or transfer coal and other solid fossil fuels into the EU. Prohibition to provide access to uh, EU ports to vessels registered under Russian flag. Also in the news, Britain has added daughters of Russian President Vladimir Putin to its sanctions list following similar moves by the US and the European Union. Now, the UK has said that it is imposing asset freezes and travel bans on Putin's daughters as well as the daughter of Russian foreign minister. Meanwhile, Japan has expelled eight Russian diplomats today 
as a response to what's happening in Ukraine. The step comes after European Union nations, including France and Germany, said this week that they would expel Russian diplomats. Moving on to sports news right now, Indian shuttlers PV Sindhu and Kidambi Srikant entered the 2022 Korea Open semifinals in the women's singles and men's singles events, respectively, at Panma Stadium today. Now, PV Sindhu defeated her Thailand counterpart and Kidambi Srikant defeated his South Korean counterpart. One more piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin. This comes in from the US. The US Senate has confirmed Ketanji Brown uh, Jackson to the Supreme Court on Thursday, making her the first ever black woman to serve on the Supreme Court. Now, the US president has called the confirmation a historic moment. He said, and I quote, we have taken another step toward making our highest court reflect the diversity of America, end quote. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.